Okay, so here is our next big project. We have a dining table and five chairs. Four of them are just side chairs with one armchair, which most likely we are missing a second armchair to make it a six seat set. But I've already gotten started on this piece, just um, then gotten to a pause with it. I've already removed all of the cushions and you can see how terrible they look. And I had, in order to get it down to the basement, hold on, I'll put this on tripod. So like I was saying, I already started disassembling this in order to get it down into the basement. It was for one, just too heavy and bulky to get it around. And two, there's just certain things that are not going to be needed on this table anymore. This table is an extending table, although there are no extensions that came with it. So, having all of these legs on it makes no sense. It makes it heavier. It's going to be a burden to move around. So, I went ahead and removed the center set. We won't be needing this to go back on. So, those pieces we say goodbye to. And if we know Packy, we're going to find another use for it and maybe make another table. But, so, so, those aren't going on and it opens all of this area up to clean and get in to. So then we remove the side leaves. And these side leaves will be refinished to go back on but being off of the piece will just make it easier to work with. So then this is what the piece will look like. And you can tell it's gonna need some sturdying up. You can see how scratched up the surface is. And, you know, veneers loose and missing on all of the chairs. Won't point every single thing out right now. So this is our next big project. Hi, my name is Packy, creator of Pack Rats Shack. I upcycle furniture, build out of pallet wood, finish interior spaces, and have a vendor booth for my creations. Welcome to my world. Big reveal, what's the ugly stuff underneath? So, I might try to clean this, not for the fact of trying to keep it, but it keeps everything nice and tight, and then if I wrap it with something more modern, at least it's clean underneath.
Okay, I tried two different cleaners. They just, they look disgusting. The other problem is, is this started coming apart anyway. So I think we're on the plan C to reupholster. So here we have it. This is the uh, seat after the cushion's been removed. This is actually right underneath the cushion, which that part's actually pretty dry and is not all crazy with stains. Just a little bit of the cushioning stuck to it. This is the bottom where it was all stapled and I think these look usable, so I just need to worry about getting the batting and the upholstery and reupholstering re these. Okay, so there you have it. This is what I call the first once over. Um, there'll be many other stages of cleaning along the way, but this is what I'm gonna do to all of the chairs and the table, hopefully yet this evening. And is what I do during this phase is I check out and try to figure and make plans on how far I wanna go with the whole refinish. Um, obviously, at eye level, you have these back pieces that are missing some pieces and have loose veneers on every chair. And then there's different marks and scratches and debris that got stuck and makes it lumpy in this area that needs sanded back a little bit more than the scuff sanding. So this is round three of glue and clamping being done with these chairs. Here's one with tape holding the veneer down tightly while it's drying. And then this one has clamps all around the veneer in the decorative plate area. And this one's being cured for all the issues with the uh, loose joints.
I think that very well could be the heaviest load that chair's ever bared. Sturdy with all that weight on it. It's not moving at all. So the legs getting clamped really work. means I gotta take that other one down.
I'm using a toothpick to keep that indention This is all what poured out of the canister of the sprayer, but yet yeah, it was unusable through the sprayer because it wouldn't be above the air level for complete suction to happen. Maybe I just don't have a good sprayer. Maybe that's what it is. This is what I discovered is the closest to a spray texture. This technique comes out the closest to what I already started doing by spraying them. So I just get a cheap chip brush and dab it into the uh, Boss Primer and I'm getting into the corners by tapping instead of brushing it in. So 
you get all of the corners and joints like this, Then you can go in with a microfiber, real short, short, smooth roller. Then you can put a thin layer by rolling it on. And then that resembles the texture of the sprayer. And it also gets it on there faster. And you can tell how thin I'm putting it on because I don't have the roller totally saturated how I still have to work it on so that things aren't like dripping and oozing over the edges causing all sorts of um, run marks and stuff. So I'd rather go over it several times in thin coats than to have to worry about drip marks and run marks and or lines left by the rollers edges so that's where we're at is continuing on with uh, putting the primer on and i've already worked through getting one good layer on four of the chairs and i flipped the table and leaves over and did a scuff sanding and wiping with a um tack cloth to get all the dust and debris off and we're going to continue on with just priming everything. You might be wondering why I spend so much time on the underneath of the chair first because once it's being in use and it's stationed in the upright position and being used no one sees under there but it's just a personal preference for me because I don't like things looking dirty or nasty and I think that this way everything looks clean and fresh and it feels more welcoming that the care was put into it all the way around and then when you're wanting to go resell it you have better buyers wanting to spend the money that you're asking for when you've done these little details. So you get the idea of what the rest of my morning's going to consist of, rotating through all of the chairs over and over until I feel like they have solid coverage, and hitting the tabletop and the leaves um, a couple of good times. But I'm about out of this boss primer, so I need to run into town to get some more here shortly. So catch you later.
is what I'm doing right now is I'm checking to see if there's any bleed through that I will hit with the dose of shellac, but also to make sure there's no debris that got caught up in the last coat of um, silk paint, which we're using the white cap color. And although I'm using a roller and stippling with a brush for a very minor amount of texture, I don't want actual chunks of debris being observed. So I'm trying to go through and just rectify any little bits of dust or bristle brush, whatnot. And at the same time, making sure there's no bleed through because I was also taking off pieces here and there in that last coat, which would expose back down to the wood in some cases. Like here, there's a little dot of bleed through where I had to remove a chunk of debris and then it brought the wood surface back enough to where the primer wasn't on it anymore. So I'm going to hit these spots like that with shellac and let it dry for an hour. And then I will be hitting it again with a second and hopefully final coat of white cap. So also, also I'm not exactly entirely happy with how all of this turned out with my recreation of some of these in some of these um, veneers and stuff and trying to cut them and sand them smooth. So I'm filling them in with this uh, color matched wood filler, which is just the most white version I can get. And I'm using this small crochet hook with a rounded edge to replicate this circle that's going around. And then anything that's overfill after that is what I'm going to um, end up using a soft sand pad with and sanding it back as much as possible. So like this one is really, really tight through there and you can tell that this is moving down that direction too much. So I'm trying to gently as I can take the edge that's too tight back a little bit Just a little shave at a time. So this one was the worst circle with all sorts of uneven lines coming in too close from both directions. So I used my um, little model knife or whatever you call them. Straightened some up, but there was still just enough that I thought if I pack it with this wood filler and then sand back, I'm going to see if it overall leaves a better line circle all the way around. So before I forget, I wanted to show what I was doing on the last coat to the chairs. Um, just changing up the technique a little bit and not using the roller at all and just stippling another layer of paint on. Um, I noticed that there's thin and thick spots with the roller because you have to kind of get it in the different angles and it's just not quite covering evenly. So in this particular case, since I'm not wanting it specific like flat and smooth, I think um, this last coat is looking better having a little bit more texture into it and a little bit more solid coverage. I'm gonna go ahead and take the time to do a visual check on each of these chairs. Make sure there's no bleed through and go ahead and start sealing them even though this paint has a protective coat within it 
I'm still going to go ahead and further protect it with this Minwax Polycrylic and I'm going to use the clear satin. got this satin online and I'm hoping it will be enough. It's not quite as thick as I thought it was gonna be. But We're just going to kind of create somewhat of an even little matting of fiber fill between these two layers of batten.
definitely a firm seat, but it's a sturdy seat. Also, did some distressing and high impact areas. Just putting a few marks on there. Not as, like necessarily doing the whole thing or trying to. Uh, I just want it to look a wee bit used already. Hello everybody, it's Nova. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video. I'll start off with having you know that on Friday is when we're going to release the table video. So you can follow up with this video and see how the chairs look with the table on Friday. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button and that notification bell so you know when we upload. And Comment what you think. Would you have done anything different? Let us know. With that said, thank you guys again so much for watching. Have a great night and stay safe out there.